going to talk uh, about SEO, but getting SEO beyond just the Yoast plugin. The Yoast plugin is very popular. A lot of people use that for their SEO implementation. Uh, we're going to say, well, what more is there? What, what is there to do regarding SEO and WordPress beyond just Yoast? Uh, if there is anything, which, uh, you know, if I'm going to talk for an hour, there better be something, right? Uh, one of the things I've been lucky enough to do along the way is write this book called WordPress SEO Success for Pearson Prentice Hall Publishers. Um, it's a couple years old now, but the, so all the technology isn't totally up to date, but the strategy is still decent. And I will give it to the first person that can tell me what canonicalization is in a correct answer. Who can talk about canonicalization? Anybody? Canonicalization? Anybody? No? Are we not a hand up back there? Okay. All right. Well, then I will tell you what canonicalization is. Canonicalization is one of the first very critical steps of search engine optimization. And when we do it, what we're doing is we are telling Google um, which display name we want for the website. So in other words, we've got at least four different options. We've got http colon slash slash example.com, http colon slash slash www.example.com, http colon https colon uh, https colon slash 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 colon www.example.com and then without the dub without the dub. So there's four different options right there. Then we could get into trailing slashes, which I'm not going to get into trailing slashes. Let's just suffice to say those four options right there. We want to tell the search engines which of those is the proper display for that URL, for the, um, the domain name that we're using. So canonicalization is the process of telling the search engines and properly displaying the URL to the viewer so that it's going to be consistent every time. So that example.com slash index.php is also going to show up um, for both HTTP, HTTPS, uh, dub, dub, et cetera. All right? Hopefully that makes sense. That's a little bit of a rush through. And the process to do that is a little bit more complicated, but that's what canonicalization is. All right. Um, who loves the presentation so far? OK, I think I saw your hand first. You get the book. That was the right answer. All right, so more than Yoast, what are we saying here? So we're going to get into topics like schema-rich snippets. We're going to get into mobile, amp, uh, mobile optimization AMP. We're going to talk about Google Search Console. And we'll talk about the future of SEO regarding Gutenberg. Uh, because basically, installing the Yoast plugin is pretty easy. And using it, you know, Yoast and all-in-one SEO uh, make their plugins so that they can be used fairly easily. All right? so. Uh, but there's a lot more to great SEO than just what those fields enable us to do. Um, and that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about data structuring. We're talking about utilizing Search Console data. And of course, the future with SEO in Gutenberg. And um, what do we need to know about these? All right, so we're going to talk about what I call the plugin multiplier effect. We're going to talk about uh, specific plugins, pros and cons. We're going to back up for a second and talk about the extra tricks. What are all these extra tricks of SEO that I'm referring to? And how do the third-party plugins, you know, separate from Yoast, factor in? OK? So uh, we're going to do some backups, and we're going to do some deep dives. Anybody see the late 80s movie, The Abyss? I see some head nods. I, I love that movie. Like in the abyss, we're going to be like in a submersible. We're doing some deep dives. We're doing some backups, all right? Because you know, I don't know what all your experience level is, but when we talk about SEO, there are certain areas that are extremely niche, extremely vertical, um, extremely technical. And then there's areas where we need to back up and say, well, OK, let's not forget the strategy. So that's going to be important to this talk, all right? Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, so we'll deep dive into schema rich snippets. We'll uh, talk more about the SEO effects overall. We'll talk about mobile first, which is Google's initiative, Google's request that uh, we start uh, catering our websites for the mobile first world, and even voice search. We'll talk a little bit about voice search as well. Um, and uh, so what of these things can be done outside of WordPress? 
Uh, we'll talk more about strategy, like I said. We gotta back up sooner or later and say, well, what's our strategy overall? We can't forget about that while we're doing our deep dives. And we'll talk about the future. Okay, so what's the plug-in multiplier, pl multiplier effect? I already mentioned it. The concept is, well, there's a plug-in for that, right? If anybody's been working on WordPress, and some of you have been developers, I'm more of an SEO, but I know that, you know, if you're a WordPress developer, you know that those plugins can stack up really quickly, right? You just start adding them in, and it's so tempting. Oh, well, uh, there's a plugin for that. Oh, there's a plugin for that, right? And if you've been a developer for a while, you know that's a big warning sign, right? Sure, there's a plugin for everything, but what happens? You get website bloat, okay? And sooner or later, not all the plugins uh, agree with each other. There's conflicts, um, right? You know, these are the issues that we run into. So uh, you, once you start updating, you have to update all in all, all these plugins. They conflict with each other. You get website rewrap. You get all kinds of fun problems. Um, so there's this big out balancing act with websites overall, but including with SEO and SEO's impact on WordPress websites. We have to think about, well, you want the SEO tricks. You want the types of results. But on the other hand, is doing these going to require website bloat? OK? So. On the one hand, you can achieve a whole lot with a lot of different SEO plugins. The problem is your website may have too many plugins which conflict and, get, and can't get all updated. On the other hand, to get these effects, there are things you can do that are hand coding, all right? There's a lot of SEO tricks that say, well, yeah, I could do a plugin, but I might as well just do hand coding. And sometimes the hand coding can get you better results. The problem is, that then you've got hand coding built, you're touching the coding of a client's website, or you're touching you know, a website, the, the code of somebody's website that somebody, uh, their developer built. There's those issues. There's also the issues that um, when the theme updates, is some of your coding, hand coding, gonna get erased, right? So uh, for you know, developers that have their experience, this isn't a whole lot of news. I, I think that the, you wrestle with these in other areas. I'm saying that these are questions you have to ask in SEO as well. You know, and then are there things that are just easier to do outside of the website? For example, why do the Google Analytics plugin, if you can consolidate and do Google Analytics, drop the code into the header? Um, again, it, you know, the website theme might knock that out, but if you're monitoring, maintaining the website, then you can watch for that. Anyway, the juggling act. This is the plugin multiplier effect and the juggling effect that we, we take into mind. But what All-in-One does, All-in-One SEO plugin does better than Yoast is that it allows the uh, Google Analytics code to be tracked properly, dropped throughout the website, so it's tracked properly, uh, whereas Yoast requires another plugin, uh, the Google Analytics plugin or another plugin for that. Okay. But Yoast is the big player. So in my firm, a lot of times when we're receiving other websites that other developers have built or client websites that have existed for a while, most of the time, Yoast is already the plugin that's installed there, okay? Now, um, that doesn't mean that you can't pull out of Yoast and in, reinstall all-in-one SEO or, or even SEO framework if that's your prerogative, uh, which is another, uh, SEO plugin that's uh, gaining some popularity today. But, uh, and there are plugins that will, you know, supposedly transfer all the SEO settings from, uh, you know, all in one over to Yoast or vice versa. But again, the more that you're relying on plugins, you know, um, is, that what's, is that really gonna be the, the best answer in the long haul? Um, not to mention that you should still QA everything. If you're gonna take everything from one uh, SEO plugin export all the settings and everything and import it into another SEO plugin, you know, you should still QA everything uh, once it's done. So again, that's require a lot of time. Um, and if you, you know, like, like me, are comfortable with both, with either, either plugin, then, you know, you could just stay with the one that's there. But uh, because Yoast is kind of the big name, the big player, um, then there's a whole lot of third-party SEO plugins, additional effects plugins that are set to be compatible with Yoast. All right, so that's another uh, benefit. So, as a list of just some of the SEO effects, some of the third-party plugins, which uh, in my firm that we've we've played around with over the years, 
Uh, they've included Google Analytics plugin, the WP Rich Snippets, and I'll talk more a little bit about Rich, rich Snippets here in a second. Um, the simple 301 redirects. You know, if you're not doing redirects, that's a fundamental requirement of SEO. Uh, and simple 301 redirects does a great job, along with other uh, 301 redirects plugins, to make it easy for you to find the once you identify what the 404 errors are then uh, in Google Search Console, then how you apply those using a 301 redirects plugin. AMP for WordPress is one that we're playing with now, too, for clients. Um, you know, Google is talking more and more how it wants mobile first, it wants mobile responsive websites, and it wants the speed of mobile pages, mobile ready pages. Even if the rest of your website um, is uh, slow, then you can have AMP pages, you know, and that can satisfy Google. So are you gonna go the extra mile and have AMP pages? You can do it utilizing a plugin if you want. Um, uh, and AMP, by the way, stands, if you're not familiar, AMP, by the way, stands for Accelerated Mobile Pages, okay? It's a Google uh, request, heavy request, uh, along the lines of the, uh, the security SSL request that Google set several years ago. Now SSL is pretty much required for Google, um, which means the HTTPS colon slash slash. So by the way, AMP is one to continually watch for information about AMP to see if Google's really going to make that a final absolute requirement versus a strong request. But a plugin to help handle that is called AMP for WordPress. All right, so even when Yoast or all-in-one SEO plugins say that they can do these things or do it all, uh, the truth is they don't or they don't do it as well as some of these third-party plugins. Okay, and then what you're stuck with is you're paying for the professional edition, you know, the professional upgrade of Yoast, and finding that it's really not getting you that much more, especially when some of these other plugins could get you, you know, a lot more uh, for what you're doing. And some of these third-party plugins are free. Some of them uh, charge a little money, but they're worth it, you know. And we'll talk a little bit about how you can help identify if they're worth it. Okay, so what are the cons of the Yoast SEO plugin? Well, um, one of the things that I, I know I'm not a huge fan of, and I know the other SEOs say the same thing, is that the traffic light reporting, right? Where the temptation to get everything green. By the time you do everything to get something green, to get a page green, then you're doing keyword stuffing, you are uh, making the language of your web's, web page too rigid, it's not user friendly, and it's got keyword stuffing, so Google isn't gonna like it either. So you're compromising in the wrong direction in both ways. Yeah? Uh, they, I don't take the Yoast course to do too much education. It says, like, don't try to make all the blogs look like links because if you do, it's not going to be for user friendly. So they did a buy, I guess, trying to make all the lights green. Isn't that hilarious? So Yoast themselves are saying, don't make all the lights green. You know, I love it. I love it. Um, that's great. Okay. So, what are con those are some of the cons of Yoast. What about cons of all-in-one SEO plugin? Well, one of the big ones is uh, for free, you can't control all the taxonomies. And if you're really into SEO, an SEO geek like I am, then uh, you know taxonomies are, are big. And what I mean by taxonomies is the ability to tell Google how to recognize or, or not see um, uh, taxonomies such as the uh, archives. It, it mostly applies to blogs, okay? So the archives of the blogs, the author portion of the blogs, the dates of the blogs. Um, in other words, what I'm trying to tell you is when you generate a blog post, it's going to have obviously its own URL for that page. Google sees a blog post as a page. What the default for WordPress settings are is often to also issue all these other URL versions of that blog post. And they can be, once the blog posts get older, they're gonna become date archives, they're going to be grouped by author, they're going to be grouped by category, they're going to be grouped by tags, the tagging that you used, and every one of those options creates a totally separate URL for that blog post. And what that means is, at the end of the day, Google sees multiple versions of that blog post. Google sees duplicate content. Now, duplicate content isn't as bad of a red flag as it was several years ago. Google says it's used to it, it's dealing with it, but we still don't want it, and we want to avoid it whenever we can. So the point is, 
you want to control your taxonomy. So that's something that Yoast does a good job of, is in the advanced features of Yoast, you can say, uh, Google, do not recognize the, um, uh, the archives, the tagging, the categories. And I should have got some screenshots of that to show you. But um, point being, those are some options. And you want to make sure that your SEO plugin allows you to tell Google to ignore um, the advanced uh, taxonomies, the advanced tagging and categories and archives, all the other options of URL displays for your individual blog posts. Does that make sense? Okay. I've heard good things about SEO Framework. I haven't used it yet, but I've read some good comparison blog posts. Um, they're listed here. By the way, my um, presentation here is already up on my SlideShare account. So if you want to find it after here, uh, or even you know while you're listening, it's fine. It's on the slideshare.net slash Jake All. And my SlideShare account is also on my business card, so if you want to get my business card after this, you can. But uh, it's the most recent um, slide uh, presentation deck that I've created, so uh, you can easily find it there and you can find some of these sources. Okay. So besides taxonomies, besides third-party plugins, uh, another important thing is um, and, and when we're talking about telling Google to ignore those uh, extra taxonomies, those extra labels, really what we're talking about is the no index command. And if you were to do it in hand coding in SEO, that's what you would be doing, would be a no index. Um, and, those t and those options in the plugin in Yoast, uh, and all, um, et cetera, give you the option to click on the no index. And that's what you're looking for, is no index for archives, no index for author, et cetera, uh, no index for categories. But um, to do that, you have to click the advanced features of Yoast. So these are good things. These are pros of what Yoast can do automatically. But let's back up. So what are these, these extra tricks of SEO that we're talking about? Um, we're talking about 301 redire redirects. I've already mentioned those. So when you have page not found errors, you want to be able to redirect them to pages that exist on your website. And simple 301 redirects is a plugin that does that. Location, SEO, and directories. So Yelp, Google My Business, YP, Bing Local, Yahoo Local. Uh, these are all location-based directories. And these are things which uh, you can either do outside of your WordPress website, or there are some um, uh, settings which uh, uh, some uh, SEO plugins allow you to do. I think Yoast has some functionality for there. I do all of that work outside of the website. Um, you know, I, I sync the Google My Business account over to the Google Analytics and Google Search Console, but um, I don't rely on plugins personally to do that type of work. We do that type of work outside and use other tools um, to make sure that those profile descriptions for location directories, reviews channels, uh, Facebook Business Local, et cetera, um, all that work we do outside of the, uh, the website. Um, so that's uh, an easy one to do outside of uh, WordPress. Schema and rich snippets. Um, I'm going to show you uh, more of that in just a second. Video SEO. There are settings for do more, to do more with video SEO within WordPress. There are plugins for that, but that's also something you know, where I find let's, op let's identify what the keywords are, let's fill uh, the description with uh, the keywords, not, not keyword stuffing it, but make sure the keywords included in the description, uploaded it properly to YouTube, make sure the transcript is allowed, and then sync that over to the website by uh, embedding it into the website with uh, that same, or having it hosted on YouTube, but having the keywords um, included there on the website as well as uh, in YouTube. Um, those are some good video strategies for SEO that are uh, not going to require a plugin. Okay. Point being, there's video SEO work that you can do outside of WordPress or outside of plugins. Okay, that's the point I'm trying to make. Social media integrations, SMO. There's social media keyword inclusion work you can do, but at the same time, the basic WordPress plugins for SEO, like Yoast, allow you to have um, you know, your Twitter profile, your, your Facebook profile, et cetera, properly indexed there within the plugin so that uh, the plugin knows what your social media URLs are 
and your website knows and Google knows. So that's what's important there. You don't necessarily have to go to a third party plugin for those types of settings. You can do social media work in social media, but make sure you have the social media profiles listed within the SEO plugin that you're using. Okay. Google tracking code for AdWords, Search Console, et cetera. And this is where it gets tricky because, uh, like I said, um, the basic version of Yoast um, in and of itself does not have the full Google Analytics tracking code enabled. You can drop the code there into the Webmaster Tools portion of uh, Yoast but um, uh, under General Dashboard. But the, um, at the end of the day, you know, to get the full tracking mechanism going there for Google Analytics and, and these other Google properties, then you either need to drop a code into the header of the website, um, in which case, like I said, it might get knocked out if you update the theme later, um, or you can use a Google Analytics plugin or another third-party plugin that uh, allows you to make sure that tracking code is set up properly. Pros and cons to either way. Um, but the advantage is if you're doing SEO, this is kind of why y y your clients should pay you for maintenance, is to maintain these properties. And then finally, AMP, which I described a little bit, accelerated mobile pages. Um, that's a uh, kind of a third party issue, a third party plugin issue. And if you want to make sure that you are coming up, there's a lot of, uh, by the way, there's a lot of SEO analytics tools today, you know, if you're doing some SEO, for example, and a competitor SEO is checking out your client, trying to bid for business for their client, they're going to run them through a checklist of uh, SEO properties. One of those things might be, well, does the website have AMP or not? And you can either be set up for it or not. A lot of times, you know, for smaller websites, we might just try to take AMP speed type suggestions. There's a lot of AMP suggestions that Google gives you, like making it sure it's uh, mobile friendly and speedy. Um, then if you take that and may have small images, make sure it's uh, a fast download. And then you're getting some of the AMP type suggestions, but not necessarily having separate AMP pages. An AMP plugin gives you separate AMP play pages for your website pages to make sure that they are totally AMP friendly for Google. Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Because what it does is Google's looking for specific AMP pages um, to your website. So for example, um, the uh, AMP for WordPress plugin creates uh, separate page URLs, which are example.com slash pound AMP. And then Google knows to look for that and say, oh, OK, this, this page is the page I'm going to serve up as being mobile responsive because it's, it's not just as it mobile responsive, but it's fast and it's AMP structured. But there's still a lot of AMP. If you, re if you read up on the types of requirements and settings for AMP, there's a lot of that you can just build into the website to begin with. All right, so now we're going to take the Abyss deep dive into schema and rich snippets to, to talk a little bit more about what that is. All right, so what rich snippets are is we want to think about rich content, OK? So in the past, the more rich content that Google would recognize, or what I should say would display on the search engine results page would be like uh, the Google, what they used to be called Google Places or Google Maps or what today is called Google My Business. All right, so we see the map display there. Um, you know, for forever we've had the pins listings on the search engine results page, right? Which have the map and the pins and where they're located. That's rich content. That's content that's above and beyond the regular traditional text based listings that Google displays. Um, but there's a lot more to it than just location data. Um, other synonyms for rich snippets you might have heard of are schema.org, which is a reference website which helps you equip your content, your website content, for uh, rich snippets uh, uh, results and rich type content. Schema markup is, is the process of, uh, of, of creating that content, marking it up correctly within the website so that you get those types of results. 
Um, rich content is what I've been referring to. Microdata is another way of phrasing it. Um, uh, and, uh, and then just structured data. These are all synonyms for uh, the, almost the same type of thing. And what are those? Well, I've already mentioned the Google My Business. Um, other rich content traditional elements include the site links. Those are the links that uh, show up underneath your primary link. So if you go to Wikipedia, if you see a Wikipedia listing or, or if you see a large website listing and you'll see uh, maybe four other links listed below the primary link all within that one listing that go to direct you to um, certain specific pages on that website. Those are called site links. That's the word for that. We've seen them for forever. A lot of people are used to seeing them, used to clicking on them, but they don't know what they're called. They're called site links. Video type content or um, other uh, rich content type elements. So uh, when we see videos listed on the regular Google search engine results page, that's rich content. And you can achieve certain results for that, SEO results, by using data markup. All right? Um, effects such as ratings and reviews. When you see a regular Google result, not in the pins results, not the maps results, but even just a regular result, and it's got ratings below it. That's, that's a strategic SEO effect um, of uh, rich snippets to put that into place to make sure that that shows up in the search engine results page. That's not by accident, All right? And then images, having images show up uh, in, not just in Google Images, but on the regular search engine results page, you can program images to have that, that effect. Uh, it's not gonna work for you 100% of the time, but you're equipping the images to come up that way. And um, really, overall, the transformation from old text listings into the richer display. So every time you see deeper and deeper and deeper listings, whether it's with video, whether it's with news results, whether it's with images, whether it's ratings and reviews, when you see a deeper result in Google, then that's from rich snippets. Um, the knowledge graph, which is what you see in the right sidebar, that's pulled from rich snippets. And so is the answer box when you see Google, all right? So there's a lot of values to this. And we want to be thinking about this because um, of the way viewers view the search engine results page. We have all these heat maps showing how viewers used to view the text-based results listings in Google. Um, today, we have to realize that even something that's lower down on the search engine results page, if it has a deeper listing or has an image attached to it, that might take precedence over the number one spot. We can't just think in terms of the number one spot today in today's social rich content world. This is the answer box. Uh, so that's in, in um, uh, what we call ground zero or what we call uh, um, the, the zero result. So it's above the number one listing is to have all these different options of the answer box and have, you know, related content, um, et cetera. So the point is that we can achieve these extra effects with third-party plugins or with extra hand coding for SEO, but it's over and above the, the Yoast plugin. And, um, and how we can identify that is it's based on categories. So there's categories such as recipes. You can, come up, you can actually come up for recipe results. I've got that for a client right now. We're coming up for recipe results because of the, the uh, microdata um, configurations that we're doing on the back end of the website. Um, uh, video I've mentioned, news article I've mentioned. All of these are different categories that are listed through schema.org. And schema.org has these different category options, and then it shows you how you can configure your website page, specific page, to come up for those. And a third-party plugin on WordPress makes it easier, such as uh, WP Rich Snippets, which we use. So these are examples of the uh, news category, Rich Snippets results, top stories. Okay. And then it gives you options to test. Google gives you options to test after publishing, so to make sure that they're coming up properly or that they're configured properly. So 
that is rich snippets in a gist. Uh, point being, these are all advanced SEO functionality that um, have third-party plugins or you can do hand, hand coding for, but are they worth it? So we're backing up, we're asking the question, is it worth it? Is it worth the SEO uh, extras? Well, and the answer to this is how many different kinds of SEO results do you want? I've already mentioned, for example, that in today's world, it's not about number one or even number zero. I mean, number zero is awesome to come up for number zero there in the answer box. But um, if you have a deeper listing result, if you have the site links, if you have the images, if you have the reviews, then the attention is going to be gravitated towards that. So if that's what you're selling, if that's what you want for your customers, then it's worth going that extra mile. Location-based SEO gets great results. Uh, video gets great results. Um, and schema help drives all of that. All right. The topic of mobile first. So mobile first is Google's initiative to say, okay, we're, from now on we're, playing, we're paying um, uh, the most attention to mobile responsive websites, but also mobile results. So you want to SEO for mobile, okay? Because that's what Google's checking for. Um, it's beyond just the topic, the idea of mobile responsive websites. It gets into mobile type keyword phrases, you know, mobile search, it gets into uh, topics of uh, voice-based ba search. Um, and for example, even in Google Search Console, which used to be called Google Webmaster Tools, which is kind of the SEO's adjunct to Google Analytics, they have to be tied together, um, those two channels. Um, even in Google Search Console, you submit a website for indexing for crawling, um, you, can, you should, and you, you can and you should, have uh, Google crawl both the desktop version as well as the mobile version of the website. Well, that's the way we used to think. Crawl the desktop first and, oh yeah, let's have them crawl the mobile site uh, uh, too. Well, now it's, we gotta think opposite. We gotta think mobile's most important. Mobile comes first. And of course, image size, website speed, all of those heavily factor in to the mobile first world. So, um, and, and to think in terms of mobile first, experiment with AMP to make Google happy. Um, a lot of uh, mobile friendly best practices also apply to AMP pages, like I mentioned earlier, so you can, um, uh, even if you don't have AMP set up properly for every page, take the recommendations, take the smaller image size, uh, et cetera and test, do speed tests. There's all these tools for speed testing for your website. You know, make sure you're using those and seeing where are the blocks. Is it too much JavaScript? One of the funny things about JavaScript is it used to be considered a Google barrier, but now in the mobile first, mobile first world, it's required for good menu options, good navigation options, those, the JavaScript type menus. Therefore, Google is starting to place a preference on JavaScript menus for that reason, because they're mobile friendly. So again, it's an opposite world than thinking of desktop first. And you know, Google Search Console, which I just mentioned, it, we're used to looking for the desktop errors and fixing those. It has a whole separate section for mobile errors. Make sure you're checking for the, the mobile page errors also and fixing those. All right, so things that you can do outside of WordPress, things you can do without the third-party plugin. It's canonicalization, which I mentioned to kick off the, the session. Uh, setting up Google Search Console properly. So again, that's what used to be called Google Webmaster Tools. You set that up along with Google Analytics, usually about the same time. And Google Search Console is what gives you uh, visibility into what the page not found errors are, as long as, along with the, a lot of good other information. You can do your location directory settings, setting up Yelp, setting up Google My Business, setting up Bing Local, um, setting up, of course, social media and doing social media posting, backlinks, so content curation sites and social media backlinks. 
that can be easily done without a third-party plugin. Uh, I mentioned YouTube and video SEO. Your disavows. So if you're not familiar with that word, basically when you identify uh, spam bot activity, when you use Search Console to identify, hey, I'm getting all kinds of spam bot activity or even potential hacking, and it's all coming from a, a bad backlink source that I don't want to have anything to do with, then you can tell Google to do a disavow command. And that's you know pretty techy, but point being, there are things to do where you can identify um, bad spammy activity regarding your website that could hurt your SEO, and there are ways to have resolutions for that outside of the WordPress website itself. All this is to say there are things you can do outside of WordPress. And then finally, of course, AdWords, PPC. Sooner or later, Google wants to be paid. You can have the best SEO in the world, but if it's for a brand new uh, startup website that hasn't had traffic previously, sooner or later, you should consider an AdWords account that helps your SEO long term. Yeah. Yeah, so um, there's content curation sites, which, you know, it's not spammy to have uh, links saved or links shared in, so it's worth doing that. I mean, every sites, whether they're Reddit, as long as it's in relevant content, to uh, bookmarking sites like Pearl Trees, you know, so in our firm we do some of this just to have backlinks and, and make sure, like I said, you, you just want to make sure it's not spammy but they are sources of, of kind of um, mass backlinks. They're not, you know, some of them might be no index, but still um, uh, some of these content curation backlinks are better than not having. So, um, so yeah, Pearl Trees, Reddit, uh, Dig um, is an older site for that. Um, uh, Google Bookmarks, uh, sites like those. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe it does um, because, well, Google, you know, pats itself on the back. But, but if you're going, if you're at a startup and a brand new website and your, your trajectory for traffic is way down here, then you bump it up with AdWords um, and do that for several months, uh, uh, several month account, Google's going to recognize that it was getting more traffic that there were more hits, that there was popularity. I mean, it's a hard thing for me to prove, right? But um, uh, I definitely think that there's been lift, you know, based on the trajectory of where a client site was previous to an AdWords campaign to where it can be organically even once a, a three-month campaign has stopped running, you know? So I believe in the power of it. I believe that it's a smart thing to do. Right, once it's already well established and the vast majority of its traffic, you know, 70% of the traffic is already SEO and, and to really make a big dent in the traffic, it would cost such a, uh, it would cost a whole lot of money in AdWords spend. I mean, I think in those cases, once it's already getting great SEO, it's, I don't know how much of a dent PPC is going to make in it. So, yeah. I mean, it's a good question. It's a good debate. Anything else? Tom, yeah. That's a, that's a great question. The thing is, mobile first is the future. It's all the buzz that Google's making. And if you can, I mean, I think it's still important because it, it may not be, even if it's in a category where desktop is the most utilized, the, the idea of mobile first means that Google is placing the most importance on mobile. So that means that um, if you've got problems with your mobile pages, your mobile site, um, mobile errors are not being redirected, then Google's going to notice that, you know, and it's not going to rank you. It's not going to give you as high of rankings in desktop without it, is, is what mobile first, part of what mobile first means. So you have to optimize for mobile, because if you don't, it's going to hurt your rankings overall in both desktop and mobile. Any other questions? Yes. So 
What do you mean by share accounts? No, I mean, I would, I would use the primary URL because the way the AMP page works is Google is for Google. It tells Google to recognize, hey, there's an AMP version of this page. Uh, here it is. You know, and, and Google will in turn say, oh, okay, well, great. Well, then I'm going to give them higher results in the you know, search results. And on mobile, this is the page I'm going to feed the viewer. But to the viewer, it's, it's not um, obvious. You know, to the viewer, it's a seamless transition. To the viewer, the URL is the URL. Anything else? OK, so we've gotten pretty deep, pretty technical here in a hurry. But I want to remind everybody you know, that, you, that it's got to be strategy first. You know, for SEO, for good SEO, you know, you've got to do your real keyword research. Um, it's not just a matter of saying, well, client, what keywords do you want? And I'm going to throw them into Yoast for you. You know, no, you should do some real keyword research using real keyword tools. Um, fortunately, the same tools are really good for competitive research. Usually they are anyway. So tools like SpyFu, SEMrush, Moz, the tools on seobook.com, uh, the AdWords Keyword Planner is very good for uh, helping with the keyword research also. So um, do your keyword research using those tools. And again, that's, that's activity that's done outside of you know, WordPress and outside of Yoast. Um, Yoast can help give you some suggestions but, um, uh, based on the website content, but I, I prefer doing all that you know, outside of the website itself. So and then in other strategy questions, you know, before you're getting deep into your SEO, is you want to back up and ask questions like, how important is location? Is this e-commerce or is it storefront or you know, is it business to business? Um, because location is really going to help garner your help get your keywords to be more long tail and help the results there if it's applicable, right? So use the location whenever you can in your keywords. Um, but it has to be applicable. So it's a strategy question. Um, how important is blogging or news? We know that news applies to getting you some good rich snippet schema results. Therefore, uh, is blogging and news important to this website? Can it be used for those purposes? And just finally, just basically, what kind of website is it? Is it brochureware? Is it e-commerce, et cetera? The strategy questions should come first before deeping, doing a deep dive into these items. And then, uh, so some other facts here, you know, again, on the topic of mobile, almost 60% of searches are mobile. Um, so you want to think in terms of mobile first keywords and voice search keywords. They are different. Uh, we're, you know, we're progressing into this voice search uh, world, of course, with the uh, Amazon Echoes in our house and Siri that we use so much on iPhone, et cetera. Voice search is, is uh, you know, we're more prone to ask questions, long, lengthy questions. Um, and there's tools like Answer the Public that can help with that. Um, yeah, but almost a quarter of voice searches are local searches. That's the other thing. Almost a quarter of all the voice-based searches are local. So Google My Business and those other local location-based directories I mentioned to you are critical. Um, Gutenberg. Yoast is screaming all you know, about Gutenberg and saying how compatible they are with it. All right? In fact, if you search, or when I've searched Google for WordPress SEO Gutenberg, I think all, every result or every result but one on the first page of uh, the search engine results page on Google had something to do with Yoast. Was either on Yoast.com or was on a support ticket regarding Yoast. So Yoast is doing their best to market themselves as being one with Gutenberg. Um, so I think there's something to be said for that. I haven't read as much regarding all-in-one SEO in Gutenberg because uh, that, it's Yoast that's dominating the search engine results page for those types of keywords. So they're doing their homework and they're st being very strategic regarding Gutenberg. But like I said, the, um, one of the dangers is, you know, when we talk about dangers with Gutenberg, is if your website theme is going to totally update, then what hand coding that you did from regarding SEO, such as putting the Google Analytics code in the header, does that get wiped out? You know, that's what to pay attention to.
Um, and I've got some good reference articles regarding Yoast and Gutenberg here if you uh, download these slides later. Um, and paying attention to the, all those plugins, right? So is, uh, are all the plugins that you use, all these third-party SEO plugins, if you use them all, great, but are they going to update properly with Gutenberg? These are the things to pay attention to and, and to be concerned with. All right, so what we've talked about, we've talked about my concept of the plug-in multiplier effect. I'm, not, I'm sure I'm not the only one to come up with that. Um, we've talked about specific plugins, pros and cons. We've uh, kind of backed up and talked about what the uh, overall SEO tricks are and how they apply to third-party plugins. Uh, we've deep-dived into schema, schema.org, rich snippets. Um, We've uh, talked about overall extra SEO effects and tried to you know, plan out, well, are they worth it or not? Um, we've talked about mobile first. Uh, we've talked about what can be done outside of WordPress regarding SEO effects. Um, we've talked about, you know, don't forget the strategy. You've got to have good SEO strategy, especially if you're going to tackle a lot of this stuff. And we've talked about the future and talked about Gutenberg. Um, what do you guys got? <laughs> 